What are the hosts? No, 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 no. Okay, they haven't started yet. Just... Is one of the first one there only dog? Margo said she was gonna go. Maybe she'll all see Margo. Yay, Margo! Oh, we also want to see her eyes. Let me see if Margo's gonna let me text her. How many? Well, it looks like it's Stephanie. Oh, hey, Barbara. <laughs> Hello. Two days in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice yesterday. Oh, it was. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. There's Peppa. Mm -hmm. Hi, Peppa. <laughs> Star six. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first Chabad of Rural Georgia Hermitage Bay. I'm so excited that you all joined us. We are going to begin in about two or three minutes. We just want to give people a few minutes to log on, get your last minute ingredients together, and we are going to make the most delicious hermitage you have ever tried. So stay tuned. I'm going to be back in two minutes, and uh, see you soon. <laughs> I can't yeah. bake. Marty took over the oven. Oh. He's baking bread, so. Oh, yum. I'll watch. We're making modifications yeah. to ours. I can't eat that. <laughs> me, me, me. Me, I'm eating it. Give me a second. So, Stephanie, I'm excited about that which we cannot talk about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. And I um, was unclear about uh, Rabbi Markovitz. I thought he might be leading our Blue Ridge Lunch and Learn, but Rabbi New will continue. Oh, okay. But, yeah, that's what uh, I yeah. yeah, I emailed Rabbi New a couple of times and he's he didn't get back to me. So my last email, I told him I had I didn't have the right information. So I emailed him before he came down with the virus. So it uh, so we're good. <laughs> Did you decide what you're doing for Passover? Oh, uh, I think we're going to my daughter's. I'll do oh, a lot of great. Crap, and then it's just going to be like her, you know, her two kids and my son and, you know, Katie and Lucy. So it'll just be the seven of us. Well, that'll be nice mm -hmm. compared to last year. Yeah. <laughs> I had thought about maybe signing up for Habad Rural Georgia um, Seder, but it's in Macon. It's just too far to drive. Oh, that's a long way. It is. It is. So. I don't know. We still don't go in any place. We don't either. No, no. Hello. Hi, Hello. I set up another screen. That way I can be able to see you guys while I'm talking. You know, just talking to the back of a camera makes it a little bit more difficult. So now we're fully set up. It's so nice to see all of our friends um, joining us, our friends from yesterday that we met at the Blue Ridge Perm drive through It's so nice to see you on Zoom. And um, I'm looking forward. Before we begin, I would love for um, everyone to go around and quickly unmute yourself and introduce yourself. It's a very special moment we have. It is the first 
Hamantash Bank from Chabad of rural Georgia. So we are all part of history. In 20 years, you'll be able to tell people I was at the first Hamantash Bank that they made. Um, this one will definitely be a unique one as well for being on Zoom, for being virtual. We hope next year to have a big Chabad Rural Georgia Hamid Tashbik in your city. So if everyone can quickly introduce themselves, um, I guess it's hard to know who should go first, but let's start. I see, I'll do an order of how I see it. Barbara, why don't you go first? Say your name, where you're from, and anything else you would like to say. All right, first, before I forget, I don't know if you're recording this, but you may want to take a picture of the screen for posterity of the Zoom screen. Barbara, anyway, I'm Barbara Pomerantz. So much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my husband, Marty, and I live in very, very Western North Carolina. We're the westernmost Jewish couple in the state, as far as we know. Um, and I'm only about 20 minutes from Blue Ridge, so I'm, I'm rather close. And I can't bake with you because my husband is baking, but I can pay great attention. <laughs> and thank well, you. Well, we love your company, Barbara. So thank you for joining on. And it was so nice to meet you yesterday. And thank you for joining us today. We get to see you twice in a week already. Thank you. All right, next. Who do we have? The Byron T. Um, you we are, yeah, sorry. This is, I'm Andy Barone, and this is my daughter, Pippa, and my mom's coming. She's making her way over. Yay, hi, Andy. Hey, there good she to is. see you. Hey, um, where are you guys from? We're in Macon. Yeah. Macon, Georgia. Awesome. So good to see you, Andy, and the family, <laughs> and Mama. Hey, Mom. Hi, Terry. Good to see you. Thanks for popping on, and um, we're, we're excited to make Hamantash with you. Great. All right, next, who do we have, Rebecca? Hi. Hi, Rebecca, where are you, where are you joining I'm us? From, from? I'm from Macon, Georgia also, and that's my mom, Margo. Hi, Margo, it's so good to see you. Hi, and we've never made these cookies before, so we're excited. Oh, wow, okay, I'm happy you told me that because that allows me to, you know, please, <laughs> During the process, if you have any questions, always feel comfortable to ask. And I'm so glad that you joined us. Thank you for having us. Yes. Okay, next we have Crystal Glenn. Hi. I'm Hi, in Crystal. Young Harris, Georgia, and um, on Lake Chatook. <laughs> nice. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. All right, who do we have next? Kimara. Do you want to unmute yourself? Hi, my name is Kimara, and we live in Kathleen. Where do you live? Warner Robins. Warner Robins. Hey, is that Sophia? Yes. Good to see you. Nice to this see you. This is exciting. We're still trying to configure. For some reason, her computer isn't logging on the password and everything I'm trying to get from here is just not working. So I need my computer. So we'll kind of just turn our camera off. Um, okay, no problem. Thank you so much for joining. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you at least on Zoom. I know, very nice to meet you as well and see you. Yes, good to see you. Okay, who else do we have that is joining us? Oh yeah, who's that? Go ahead. This is Stephanie Shulman. Hi, Stephanie. Where are you coming on from? We're coming from Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge. It was so nice to meet you yesterday. And thank you we for enjoyed joining it. the Hamantash Bay. Invite the people from Young Harris area to join us in Blue Ridge with our yes. congregation. Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. And I think last but not least, Chaya. Hi. Hi, Shia. Where are you joining us from? Well, we're joining from New York City. New York City. <laughs> Woo! That's the amazing thing about Zoom. Like, you can be in New York, you can be in Bacon, you can be in Blue Ridge, and we can all be here together. And this is actually my sister-in-law, Rabbi Markowitz's sister, and her two, two of her three gorgeous children who are joining us. So thank you for joining us. 
It's a real honor. And I believe that's it for now, right? All right, let's begin. So the first thing we do, obviously we all washed our hands. And over here I have my bowl. So we're gonna take our bowl. And the first thing we're going to do is crack our egg. So a little Jewish trivia, um, blood is not kosher. And sometimes eggs um, have blood in them. I know it's surprising to some people, but uh, people say, I've always made eggs for breakfast. I've never seen blood. But surprisingly, many times when I check my egg for blood, I do see a blood spot. So as Jewish people, because we are not allowed to have blood, it's considered not kosher, we always check our eggs for blood before we eat them for breakfast and a cake, etc. So I have here a see-through cup, and we can all do this together. If you have your eggs out, crack your egg in a see-through cup so that we can check it to see if there's any blood. I really hope someone gets blood today, so that way you can see that it's true that sometimes there is blood. Yes, Rebecca. What, what size egg do, do we use? Because we have our own homegrown eggs, so we have like a really wide variety of sizes. Okay, so any egg, I've got everything from large, large, sometimes I use extra large, any, today I think I'm using a large egg. Large, large, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're so cool, Margo, making your own eggs over there. Look at you. <laughs> Love it. I can do. Let me crack my egg in my cup. Okay. And as you see, I do not have any blood. So that means it's kosher. I'm going to pour it into our bowl. Awesome. Next, I'm going to add one fourth of a cup of oil. Rabbi Markowitz kindly measured everything out for me. So this is a really fun, easy. Oh, look at you, Steph. I see you going there with your oil. Awesome. Okay, one fourth of a cup of oil, pour it right in. Awesome. Andy looks great. Okay, perfect. So the oil's in, the egg is in. Then we're gonna add our sugar. You don't need to mix yet. Add your sugar. It is a half a cup of sugar. Pour that in. Beautiful. And then three tablespoons of orange juice. Now, a lot of people are surprised when there's orange juice in the recipe, but hamatasha that have orange juice are the most delicious tasting um, hamatasha that you can have. So I always recommend sticking with a hamatash recipe that has orange juice. It really gives that, that fresh, orangey, delicious taste. So I'm going to pour that in now. And I'm going to give you a little extra thing that you can also do in the future, if you'd like. Take either a tangerine or an orange and adding a little bit of zest to the orange zest to your hamatash recipe really gives it a nice taste and aroma. So I know it's not part of the recipe, so don't get all like, oh my gosh, I don't have it prepared. This is something extra I wanted to teach you just so when you make them again tomorrow, because tonight you're gonna have finished all of them and I have any left for Purim, this is something you can also do. So I put the orange juice in and I'm just enjoying, I'm taking a little orange and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. It's actually tangerine um, and that, fresh oh my gosh I wish you could smell it there's nothing like zesting fruit and lemons and limes it smells so good so I'm just gonna add a little bit of orange zest to mine just something a little extra perfect and last but not least we are going to add the half a teaspoon of vanilla extract so we first combine our first five ingredients together and then we start mixing it. So once you have the five ingredients inside, give it a nice mix. Yum, you smell the orange juice, it's delicious. How's it going out there? Hey Mal, thanks for joining. 
If you want to turn on your camera, everyone went around and introduced themselves for a minute. We'd love to know where you're coming in from. Give a little shout out. So here is my I'm picture driving, so far. I'm driving right now, so I can't do too much. <laughs> hey, Mal from the car. I love that. Where are you calling from? Where are you joining in Dublin, from? Dublin, Georgia. From where? Dublin. Dublin. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Isn't okay. this special? We get to bake hamantash in a beautiful Purim tradition together with Jews from all over Georgia. It's very special. Thank you for joining. Okay. Once you have the first five ingredients mixed, then we are going to add our baking powder. Um, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And we are going to add our one and three fourths cups of flour. So you take that in and pour that in. My mother always taught me clean as you go because then you have a huge mess after all that fun. So look how easy that is. Trash, just have to clean that. How we much flour again? Good question. Thanks for asking. One cup and three fourths. So one and three fourths cup of flour. Okay, okay. Okay, so I have a fourth here, so let me just do three of these. And one, she said one and three fourths. Uh -huh. Whoops, whoa, 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 you wait, got wait, it wait, wait, here. No, 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 not so uh, aggressive. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. You gotta do that. Golda, how's it going? Give me a thumbs up, Golda. Is it going good? It's getting going. Awesome. Okay, hold on. Yeah, and then one. one. Well, I need two, uh, two halves. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right, Andy. Looks like it's going well over there. Yeah. Stop. Okay. That's enough. That's it, yeah, babe. You have to put in the right amount. <laughs> it's gonna be. You're gonna. It's just. I have a um. <laughs> Okay, so get it mix off. the mix until it becomes like a bulk of dough. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, just, just, just get over that. Still what? So it becomes a ball of dough. Yum, it smells so good. How's everyone doing out there? Stephanie, how's the cooking show? Going good. Okay, good. Is this Jewish Martha Stewart? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we even have the wine. <laughs> oh, you really came prepared. Okay. All right. So now when your dough is, everything is mixed in, um, we're going to start working with the dough. So I want to share with you a few ideas. Obviously, today we're keeping to this recipe, but I have no doubt that it will not be your first and last time making hamantashen. So I want to share with you a few ideas um, that you can do. So when you already have your dough made, you can play with it a little bit. You can split it into, let's say, three, you know, three different balls. And in one ball, add your favorite sprinkles into the dough. I see people add fruity pebbles, colorful sprinkles. And when you make your hamantash, the dough now has all these colorful sprinkles and it looks really, really cute and fun. The kids always love it. So you can play around with your dough in that way. Um, another way is I actually brought some cocoa powder. Um, you can add like a tablespoon of cocoa powder to one of the hamantash balls. And then you'll have like a chocolatey flavor hamantash dough. Um, and then if you fill it with like peanut butter, you have that chocolate peanut butter delicious um, taste. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, some people like to add in their doughs to make it more like savory and people put different herbs. I like to keep it just pretty much basic. Like I showed you before, I do add the orange zest to give that more of the orangey taste, but I'm gonna keep it basic for today. But you can add things into it um, as you desire. So this is what we're gonna do. Is everyone ready to make the hamantash? All right, we're gonna give one more minute. Okay, perfect. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to put on the table where you're going to roll out the hamatashin. You're going to put a little bit of flour because it could become very sticky and mm -hmm. you don't want that to happen. So sprinkle the um, floor with some flour of your, where you're going to be rolling it out. Rebecca, looks like you're up to up to par. Sophia, good to see you. How are you guys doing out there? Very good. Okay, okay good. Awesome. So once you have your dough ready, put some flour on the area where you're gonna roll it out. And then we're gonna dump our dough on the flour. Now you don't want to play with this dough too much and you don't want all this flour, like you don't want too much flour. You know, let me actually put a little bit less flour. Um, okay, so we're gonna put that down. And I'm going to roll it out. So I'm gonna use a rolling pin just a regular wooden rolling pin um, to roll out the hamantash and dough. And just put it on top. I'll put a little flour on it. Put a little flour on your um, rolling pin so it doesn't stick. Show me your rolling pins. Anyone have a rolling pin with them? Uh, Stephanie does. Okay, amazing. Awesome, Rebecca. Okay, put a little flour. Okay. And then we are going to go like this, okay? Roll it out. Oh, see, mine's already sticking. You have to be really, really careful. So add a little bit of more flour on my rolling pin. There we go. Make sure there's flour on the rolling pin. It really makes a difference. And roll it out. You don't need to roll it out too thin. This is a good tip. Don't roll it out too thin right now because sometimes when you roll it out too thin, it makes it harder to pick it back up. Um, you can always roll it out thinner once you pick it back up in the round thing. Okay. Who can show me your rolled out dough? Ooh, awesome, Rebecca, great. Beautiful. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is make circles because circles is how we make hamatashin. It starts with a circle. Marco, how are you doing? You're good? Okay. I just know it's your first time, so I want to make sure I'm supporting you enough. Okay, so take something like a cup. I'm gonna take this little um, glass bowl, but something small, like a little bit smaller than the palm of the hand. So you have a cup or bowl, and we're gonna make a circle on the dough. So um, just like this. I'm making a big cup of that's how it looks, go around things. You could um, roll your dough even thinner, but I don't want it to stick. So that's why I was trying to be a little bit, but I'm gonna roll this a little bit thinner so I can get some more hamantash out of it. Okay. Okay. For now. So make some circles with your hamantash dough. Perfect. Wash my hands.
Okay. So now we're going to make the filling. So the filling you can even have more fun with. Anything your heart's desired, you can put in your dough to fill it. You can put um, strawberry jam, apricot jam, blueberry jam, cherry jam, lotus, peanut butter, chocolate chips, uh, marshmallows, and chocolate chips together. Whatever you want, you can put in, um, and it always comes out delicious. Some tips in putting in the filling is that you don't want to put too much in it because it tends that it could explode like in the oven. Sometimes they unfold. So this is the part where you got to pay close attention. So that way your hot sauce stays in a perfect triangle even when it's in the oven. So take out a spoon. I'm inspired today to use this jam. I don't know if anyone has seen it. Um, it has been speaking, spoken about a lot on Instagram and, um, all over different social media. Does that, has anyone heard of it? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's called Bonnie Maman. I think that's how you spell it. Um, we're using the cherry reserve, uh, preserves today. So Sophia, please tell me if I understood the story wrong. I heard it about like a week ago that, Recently, a Holocaust survivor um, was sharing how she only uses this jam because the owners of this jam actually saved her and took her into her home during the Holocaust. So, that sounds right. Was that right, Sophia? Yeah, that sounds right. What's yeah, the name exactly. of the jam again? Say that again. The name of the jam again? I'm so sorry. I'm sure. Missing. The name is, I'll bring it up closer. It's called Bonnie Maman um, Cherry Preserves. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, where did you get it? We got these at Sprouts. Okay. Uh, they have them at Kroger. They have them everywhere. Okay, cool. Yeah, they have them everywhere. But recently this lady, as I was saying, came out saying that the owner, when she was a little girl in the Holocaust, the family was living, I guess, somewhere in Poland or Germany, and um, the family took her in to keep her safe. And recently she came out saying the story in an interview or something. And because of that, people are really making an effort to support this company of Jam to thank them for saving this beautiful Jewish lady. So I was inspired, you all, I was influenced and I bought this. My husband liked the cherry flavor, so we got that one. And samples are gonna try some chocolate chips. And I got this in the cocoa. To me, because okay. I'm a cocoa master. Yeah, but the thing with cocoa mm -hmm. is that you really just don't need. It's really it's pretty much that. After okay, this, okay. So yeah. I'm gonna open my jam. Okay. But then wow, it smells so good. Okay, you wanna do the blue next? Okay, so watch carefully how this works. Let's Before just... you put the jam in, make okay. sure that your hamatash okay. dough is not stuck to the bottom. Let me do right. the cocoa. So this one is not. And don't put too much of the filling. A lot of people get excited. They want this full filled hamantash. Trust me, once you fold it all together, it will be full, it will be delicious. So take a little bit of it, of the filling, about a teaspoon or a little bit less in the middle. Maybe a little bit more, like a good, good teaspoon. Oh, cool. And this is that the is, important part. Is everyone watching how to hold it? Okay, I'm going to have the camera come a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. maybe hold it okay, do you see it? All right, I'm going to show you two ways to um fold the habitat in there's the classic way and then they say like more fancier way um okay, if you right. have what's that noise? Okay. If you have, um i actually saw someone who had a um a cup that uh -huh. had like ridges on it of some sort yeah. and they made it like that and then there was all these like ridges on it as well which was pretty cool. Um, okay, so this is the classic way to do it. Margo, you're watching? 
Okay, so this is a classic way. You go to the top, you pinch the top, and it's really important that it's pinched tightly because you do not want it to open. Then you go to the bottom, you bring it up, and you start pinching the sides. Okay, this is like a bigger hamantash, <laughs> but it'll be delicious. And that is the classic way to make a hamantash. I'm going to take over here um, a cooking sheet. I'm gonna put a little pan so it doesn't stick. And I'm just gonna lift this up and lay it down. Okay. Let's do another one. See, this one's already sticking a little bit. Gotta be careful. Okay. We're gonna do another one. I'm gonna show you another way to fold. Okay. So this is pretty similar, but apparently it's like the fancier way. So I'll show you another way. Put about that teaspoon in. And this way, this is how you do it. You go up and you fold it down. See that? Then you take this side and you like fold it down. And then you take this side and fold it down. See that? So the first way was like pinched and this one is fold, folded and I don't know, there's something about the folded that people get excited about. So I wanted to teach you the folded way as well. Uh, um, okay, now I'm gonna do one with chocolate chips. Okay, I'm gonna do one with chocolate chips. So it's pretty similar way to do it. Take uh, about a teaspoon of chocolate chips, put them in the middle, and I'm going to fold the classic way this, this time. So just pinch. And ooh, these are jumping out. Got to keep them inside. A second. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And make sure the pinch is really good because you don't want it to pop out like these two little babies did. <laughs> Gotta go back inside. Okay, pinch it in. And then I'm going to pick it up and place it down. So we got one chocolate chip and two cherries. How's it going over there? I see Chaya, I see Golda in New York is making the circles. And Barbara, how's it going for you? My husband was making bread, so I'm just enjoying watching you. Oh, okay. Well, I don't have that. I hope you're enjoying. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What's your favorite Hamatash filling that you usually like to eat? I like the apricot mm, or prune. I actually or... think that's my favorite too. Apricot is really, really good. Yeah, maybe, you remember yesterday we gave out those firm gift bags? Yeah. At, uh, bank. So I think some of them were apricot. So if maybe you were lucky and inside you got an apricot hamitash. We did. <laughs> oh, score. <laughs> awesome. Margo, Rebecca, how's it going over there? Awesome. Okay, I want to keep making. I'm going to actually re-roll this one because it starts sticking a little bit. But it's really exciting that firm is coming up in just a few days. The fast of Esther is actually on Thursday. Um, and the actual Purim is Thursday night, Friday. So um, if you want to know the mitzvahs of Purim, you're welcome to readmorevada.chabad.org. 
but there is a mitzvah to make a festive meal, to give gift bags to each other, to hear the reading of the Megillah, and to give money to the poor or to, you know, a charitable organization. So um, those are the four mitzvahs. And yeah, it's pretty exciting. I actually started, you know, we've been making all these gift bags that we're handing out in rural Georgia. And I think tomorrow it's Columbus. We're going out to Columbus. Yesterday we were in Blue Ridge and some areas over there. Um, so if you have any friends in Columbus, let us know. We'd be happy to bring them a Purim um, gift bag. If you know any any friends out there. Um, does anybody anybody dressing up this year? Anyone dressing up for Purim? I think Pippa's going to dress up. I don't know. We're deciding. Pippa, what do you want to dress up as? What do you want to dress up as? Yeah, you can dress up as anything. Kind of like Halloween, I guess. I want to dress up as... Well, this is... A chinchilla. A chinchilla. Did I do that right? Put some chocolate chips inside there. How much? There you go. All right, guys. I'm gonna go get Golda Rice. Okay. okay. Oh, Golda, you're putting in chocolate chips. <laughs> yeah. You want to tell Auntie Kyla what you're dressing up as? A king. Uh, a king. Now you're dressing. I'm being a queen. I'm being a king. Actually, I'm being a king. You and your brother are going to be king and queen? Yeah. You're going to fold it for us. Uh, here's some pretty. That's so fun. Okay, well, one step I forgot to do is that we need to preheat the oven. So I'm going to preheat the oven. I believe, I have to check, but I believe it's 350. I need to do my oven. 350, so put that on, get that going. It's always best to preheat your oven. I remember growing up, I would never preheat my oven when I would bake. I would just turn it on because I would only remember about it like the minute before I'm putting my food in. And um, it definitely makes a difference to the baking when you preheat it and just put it in at the right time with the right amount of heat. Um, so that's a good step. There we go. One more hamantash. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She oh, Peppy, are you counting? Do you want to have? I need you to help me on this one. I'm trying to just do one next one. It's hard with when you put a lot of chocolate chips in. I know, I'm really good at it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, All right, I would love to see the hamantash of your making. So if you could take a picture of it, when it's raw and when it's baked, I would love to see it. And you could share it on Facebook, tag us, Chabad Rural Georgia, tag us on Instagram. And it's a fun way to show off your holiday spirit and also spread the word about all of our fun events. Um, I also want to let you know that this Wednesday at, um, I think, 7.30 p.m., we have a women's class called um, Esther Unmasked, and it's going to be all about the story, you know, the inner depth of Esther and the story and lessons that we can learn from Purim to apply to our lives today and enhance our daily living, because we know that everything that happens in the Torah, all the stories and all the holidays are not just a storybook that we pick up at the library, but are actually lessons for us to learn in our day-to-day -day life. That even in 2021, the story of Purim is actually applicable to us today more than ever. So join us this Wednesday at 7.30. Um, you probably got it in your emails. If you're not on our emails, you are welcome to um, message me or my husband after. We'd be happy to sign you up for that. Um, here are my Hamatashin so far. See that? It's supposed to be three. I know. Three, three, one. Here, here, I'm going to show you how to do it. Here, here, here. Someone want to show off their hamantash into the video? <laughs> to the Zoom? And then do, then pick up the Wow, Margo, look at that. Your first yeah. hamantash, and it looks, sorry you can't see me. I'm just looking at the other computer. Whoa, okay. Sophia. Oh, my gosh. 
Marshmallows. That is so genius. I've actually never been with marshmallows. And then pinch the side. Wow, your habitations are all so intimidating. They're like perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just pinch the top in one thing. There you pinch. go. That does not look right. You well, it does. Well, you got to put some filling in it. And then you can make it smaller. I mean, you okay. can pinch it. I'll make another chocolate chip one. Oops, I'll put a little bit too much. Some filling in it. Okay, let me see if I can. Can you open the recipe and tell me how long it takes for? 15 to 18 minutes. Okay. Make your hamatasha for 15 to 18 minutes. We're at 350. And that's it. That's pretty much making hamatash. Um, if anyone has any questions or any comments, I'm going to make one more and then I'm going to place them in the oven. So I'm taking some scraps because when you make all the circles, it ends up being like scraps on the side. Then you got to make a new circle. Pat it down. No, I'll make this one small. My husband likes the bite size hamantasha. So I'll make them small for him. Um, a little flour, a little bit of filling. We don't want it to overflow. It's like a baby hamantasha. <laughs> so cute. There we go. How cute is this? It's so adorable. Uh, did you did you make those hamantasha that you delivered? What'd you say? Who made those the hamantasha that were delivered? Oh, I wish I made them, but thank mm -hmm. God we gave out so many um, hamantasha that we were not able to make them ourselves. We'd be giving out many many gift bags. Um, so those are from a bakery, but um, they are delicious. Yeah, they didn't make it. They didn't make it even two minutes in this house. What'd you say? They didn't even make it two minutes. I know they're really, really good. It's interesting because sometimes, like, I mean, there's nothing like homemade, but I feel like that brand did a pretty good job. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna make one more baby one. Is anybody making a cool flavor they want to share? I'm making, me and my mom are making a cool flavor. Ooh. Pippa, which one are you making? We put cocoa powder in ours, and then we're putting chocolate chips in it. Yum, so that's like a chocolate chocolate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, have some more dough. I made a couple of this fig. I don't I usually put it on cheese. So oh, yeah, to... what is that? It's called fig spread. You find it in the cheese section. Wait, how many minutes do we put it in? For about 15 to 18 minutes. Oh. Um, I'm actually inspired by Andy and Pippa, and I am going to add cocoa powder to mine and make a chocolate one also. So look, I just added some um, cocoa powder. Mix it in. I've actually never made a cocoa, cocoa hamantash, so let's see how this comes out. See, I wanna copy you. Thanks for the, ins the inspiration idea. Okay, see now it's brown, like chocolatey. And I'll add some chocolate chips. What do you have for it? Yeah, Pippa, that was such a good idea. It looks so good. We, we learned that um, the cocoa powder can kind of dry out the dough. So. Oh, I put really little of, of, of it. Um, 
Also something exciting, besides for our women's event happening this Wednesday, we are actually working on our first public seder in Macon, Georgia, um, which is really, really, really exciting. And hopefully we'll have more information and a sign up website. And for all those who live in the area and are able to join, we are going to be having a really beautiful Seder in Macon this Passover. And if you don't live in the area, we actually have hotel rooms that are getting a special rate for Passover. So those that want to stay at the hotel and join the Seders are welcome to do so as well. So keep your eyes on our emails, our website, Facebook, Instagram to get all the information on the public Seders because we would love to have your family come and enjoy. You know, last year Passover was definitely not um, usual and we are excited that now we are able to of course according to the CDC guidelines have a safe beautiful meaningful Seder so if you're in the area or in you know you're able to join able to join us by sleeping over or driving in we'd love to have you there um it'd be it's going to be very special and meaningful and we're really looking forward <laughs> Here, so. mm -hmm. I have no idea. I used it. Who is that? Here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um. Okay, let's scrape. Do that. I'm going to put my Is first trade commentation. My first trade of commentation going in. And now I'm going to put a little timer, um, put a little timer for 15 to 18 minutes so that they will be delicious and ready. Unfortunately, we're not going to sit around here for 15 to 18 minutes to see the beautiful hamatashi come out. But I'm asking, please take pictures, tag us, send them, share them. Um, really excited to see how yours come out and hear how they taste it. I'd like to take this moment to wish everybody a happy, happy Purim. May the joy of Purim permeate the rest of your life and throughout the year. And I look forward to greeting all of you Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. for Esther Unmasked. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Kyla. Bye. Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Barbara. Bye, Bye Marco and Rebecca. Thanks for joining. Bye, Mal. Hope your drive went well. And mm. bye to the Barons. Byron, sorry. Yeah, Byron. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you all. Haksamea. Haksamea. Good to see you.